Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program, version 0.18. Now, what's so good about version 0.18? Docking and fuel transfer are the main two options. Of course, you could also talk about action groups and the fact that there's new celestial bodies and um, flight planning and all the amazing stuff, that, all the new parts that have been added. But this is my mission to basically prove that I have the capability to dock. Because I'm working on something big, and I have lots of plans for it, and I'm working on it countless hours into the night and into the early mornings to try and prepare for hopefully one of the most awesome videos that I'm going to be posting on the channel. Of course, there are going to be setbacks and things, but I'm hoping to be able to document them and talk about them in the videos. This is actually post-commentary, by the way. I recorded this last night as I was finishing up proving. Now, most of you will know that this ship, by the time it gets into... Hmm, I don't know, I mean it can get into orbit pretty easily to be honest, but by the time it docks with something it's going to be pretty low on fuel, so we're going to demonstrate fuel transfer. And you can see there on the map view that we just... there we go, there's the map view. We're going for that nearest space station. Of which the icon isn't actually a space station, which is a bit weird. I thought I had set that. I think there's a bug. This is still the pre-release version, even though the actual game is out, by the way. I just haven't updated yet. Um, there's a bug definitely in this version, where if you join a ship to another ship, the uh, the whole icon resets. The name of the ship remains the original Actually, how does that work? How do you des how does the game decide which one to call which? I don't actually know. I think if you are flying one as you dock it to the other, then the other name stays the same. <laughs> which rhymes, that's nice. But we're getting into orbit. Now, whilst I'm performing these operational uh, orbital manoeuvres, we'll see the new features of the map view, including that. Set as target, Space Station Mark III. So... The first thing is descending nodes and the ascending nodes. Those are the nodes of the orbit, basically where the orbit passes over the equator. Now, of course, a perfect orbit will have a ascending and descending nodes of 0, 0.0 degrees. 0, 0.0000 degrees. But, and in which case, they can be clusters anywhere along the orbital circumference. But you're never really going to get a ship that is, uh, get an orbit that is that perfect. So it's not likely to happen. Up there in the top right we have the resources tab, and you can see I'm running low on fuel. Remarkably low, actually. In the pre-recording of this video I actually ran out completely, and I managed to get and dock with the ship on only RCS. I have to tell you guys, my opinion on RCS has changed. Quite significantly. It now has a use, which it didn't have beforehand. And with regards to the RCS to the Moon series, that is going to continue, but obviously it's going to be in the new version. And all the pre-submitted test pilot ships uh, may or may not be featured. There's definitely one that I want to do, which is IPAA DLA version 1 or something. Whatever that was. Here we are coming up to an ascending node. Now, I'm actually going to... Uh, adjust at this point because the ascending node when you set your target the ascending node is when you cross over the when when your orbit crosses over the orbit of your target's ship's orbit <laughs> so that is the perfect time at which to burn south or north depending on whether you're on the ascending or descending node of that orbit but anyway that was a digression um, yeah the test pilot series may or may not be uh, feeding off of the backlog of 0 0.17.1 ships. But there are plenty of new videos I've got lined up. Actually, I am about to do a live stream right now. Literally right now. I should be finishing this recording within the next five minutes, although that's not going to happen. But um, I haven't received word back from them yet, so things could go horribly wrong. But I will be doing a live stream with the rest of the media group. Now, the media group is made up of fellow YouTube commentators such as Operation DX, who I've mentioned quite a few times in my videos, and other people such as XPD TV, uh, that's Play Daily TV, and Scott Manley is likely to be on there, I'm not sure if he is completely confirmed for that, but yes, I heard you cry, Hot Gaming going in with Scott Manley in a video, 
surprising for me as well, I know. But uh, this media group is really great. I've made some good friends, I think, off of it. Other people going to be there are Chicken Keeper 24. It is 24, isn't it? I think it is 24. I should really check that. Yes, 24. Phew. Uh, Chicken Keeper 24, who has 30 something thousand subscribers, so he's the biggest one in our group so far. Um, and there is also going to be Ryan, the Solar Gamer. He's definitely going to be there. Um, and that's most of them, I think. We were all in a chat, in a Skype call during KerbalCon yesterday, which I did watch, for those of you who um, who were watching it as well. I thought a lot of what they were saying was very, very interesting. Now, back to the video, you'll see that here on the map view, we, have, we are approaching this orange marker. For some reason, our orbit isn't perfectly at the right inclination, I don't know why, but the orange marker is close intercept. So right now we are actually pretty close to our target space station, which is good. I'm just adjusting the orbit to try and match the uh, the orbit of the space station more more accurately, at least. Uh, we've burnt upwards in order to bring the perigee up and the apoapsis down. Now we're just going to burn a bit more retrograde in order to bring that down. The space station is actually in a 120 kilometer orbit, so there you go. We can see we have a close encounter coming up. And here it is, so close to us, we could almost reach out and touch it, if it wasn't about 2.7 kilometers away. But now, the thing is, we can see it. If you're within 3 kilometers of your space station, or whatever ship you're trying to dock with, you can pretty much just burn towards it, or towards where you think it's going to be, um, and you'll end up drifting over towards it. Actually, if you have it set as a target, you'll see on the nav ball there, the meters per second, how fast you're traveling, when it says target above it, it's actually in, it's actually referring your speed relative to the ship, so you know how fast you're traveling relative to the ship, so if you're pointing straight at it and burning, and you're going hundreds of meters per second, you know you're probably going to be crashing into it imminently. But yeah, just adjusting, burning around. Um, I have a recommendation for you guys. If you're wanting to make small docking ships like this, don't use RCS tanks. Use the radial ones. The big RCS tanks have something like 100, uh, 100 litres of fuel in them. These ones have 10 each, and so I have a total of 40 on this craft, and it is more than enough, really. If you look at the top right, I haven't used any yet, and we're already very close. And there is the space station. This is actually Space Station Mark 3, and you may have seen on the map view, I have Space Station Mark 4 in a higher orbit. That is the core of my, my latest design, my latest Space Station core for the interplanetary fleet. We're going to be sending to either Juno or Lathe, I'm not entirely sure which. But here we are, coming in close, only 100 or so meters away. Now we're switching on to RCS control. And uh, I've actually deactivated the engine just to show that that feature is capable. You can now deactivate and shut down any engine, not just the atmospheric air breathing engines. Which is absolutely great. Really nice to know now. And we're running low on fuel. Um, but we're getting in closer. You can see I've just switched over to the space station now. With its massive solar panels and already got three ships docked there. This is going to be the fourth coming in just above. So what we want to do is basically turn the ship just so it's level with the horizon. Also the docking port is level with the horizon. You can see we're actually pointing north, which is for a very good reason. Switching back to the other ship now. I recommend, sincerely recommend, putting your space stations into uh, pointing northwards as they go around, presuming you're in a equ equatorial orbit, that is. Because they, the effect you have when you're orbiting and you're using advanced SES to keep your position is that you end up going round the, uh, going round Kerbin, pointing in one way relative to cosmic microwave background radiation rather than the horizon. So if you're pointing prograde at one side of Kerbin, half an orbit later you'll be pointing retrograde which can make space stations turn head over heels as they go around in orbits, whereas if it's pointing north or southward, then it just rotates. And it's very nice, especially if you are docking laterally, 
uh, as I am doing right here, adjacent to it. So here we are, actually opening up the solar panels now, which is a bit pointless for two reasons. A, we're on the dark side of Gerben, <laughs> so we're not going to be getting much light here anyway, and also because, if anything, it's increased our surface area, which means we might clash into the other solar panels. Yeah, it wasn't, they aren't particularly placed very well on the ship. Switching back now, just making sure that we have opened our docking ports, there we go. I love that, I love those docking ports so much. I've, I think they're a lot more aesthetically pleasing than the other ones are. The uh, the central kind of four-way core bit, yeah, I don't really like them that much. Although I have used them in the Mark IV space station. Maybe I'll improve that again into the Mark V, and we will actually be visiting the Mark IV space station in the next episode of this. Basically my feature of docking for the first time. And as you can see from this spacecraft, I have docked an awful lot. I, I love docking so much. Just, it's so tense. First time I did it, it was so tense. I feel a bit more relaxed about it now, because I'm confident with my RCS control. Which, incidentally, I'm not actually using the new docking uh, key bindings. I'm using the standard old version RCS. But as you can see, we're getting in very close, and if we get just close enough, just bring it up and float our way inwards, magnetism will take hold of our docking port and basically drag us in. Nearly, nearly. Come on, any second now. Any second. Ooh, the tension. Tension is mounting. Just a bit to the left, Harvey. Just put the ship a bit to the left. There we go! <laughs> and then it will find its perfect point and you'll zoom out and be docked. A bit of a tutorial, a bit more of a highlight. Uh, I'm going to go live stream now, hopefully. There's a link in the URL for the live stream. And I shall see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please do like the video. And I'll see you next time.